The first thing that comes to my mind, I think, is something to do with patience. It's something to do with occupying the moment you're in. Our greatest temptation is to run away from the moment we're in, either to the past or to the future or to somewhere else. The moment we're in is the only moment there is. So occupy it, be there, inhabit. The beginning of wisdom is feeling your body here in this moment. I've sometimes said to people that the most spiritual and instructive thing you can do sometimes is go out in the rain and get wet. There's nothing you can do about it. It's raining. Be wet. So haul in all the, the tentacles and the strands and the webs that you throw out in the direction of the past and the future and the other place. And bring them in gently where you are. So the body teaches you in those circumstances. So that's, that's a starting point. Second thing coming from that is that, of course, you need day after day to have some times when you quite deliberately set out to, to be where you are. Times of stillness, times of openness. People talk a lot about mindfulness, but that sometimes just means observing what's going on in your head. And I'm not talking about observing what's going on in your head, but about a real receptivity. Because as a, as a Christian, as a person of faith, I believe that I'm set in the midst of gift. There's always an agency around that is giving. That doesn't mean, of course, that every moment is wonderful, that you have this Pollyanna world in which everything that comes to you is nice, really. It isn't. But everything that comes to you has the potential of being a moment of growth. If you're so busy looking backwards or forwards or sideways that you can't be in the moment, you'll miss that opportunity of growth. So to spend time in silence and stillness day by day, even if it's only a few minutes, is a way of just alerting yourself to what's possible in terms of that growing. Third thing which I think is connected in some ways with that, is you realize that the person you're with, the people you're with, the situation you're in, has come to be by lots of accumulations of interaction, of factors that you don't know or don't understand, and that therefore what's in front of you is deeply mysterious. You can't manipulate it, control it, you can't change it straight away. And so the person you confront is, if you like, the, the surface of a great mystery. Again, it doesn't mean they're nice, it doesn't mean they're easy, but it does mean that they are there as part of this invitation to growth. And I think it's out of that that something like compassion begins to grow. Because compassion isn't the attempt to get right inside somebody else and say, oh, now I know exactly how you feel. Compassion is much more standing and saying, I have no idea how you feel, but my heart is open for you. Again, being that moment, not seeking to control or shape, but holding the openness. And I think what that amounts to is who had this image, I can't remember, but it's a powerful one. In the moment, you have water cupped in your hands. Hold it. Be still enough for it not just to dissipate. And in all that is, is God. In all that is the unconditioned reality on which every moment depends, which is in every moment giving into you, communicating into you, and drawing you out in the sheer physical fact of the moment, in the awareness of the mysteriousness and difficulty of another person, in all that is action, drawing, holding. But you miss it if you don't have some discipline of cupping the hands and holding it. Now, it's easy to say that we ought to let go of anxiety about the present moment. Anxiety is enormously attractive. It's a 
hugely popular leisure activity, we make ourselves Olympic experts at anxiety all the time. And most of us know that anxiety is not where we need to be, and yet we behave otherwise. Our culture ferments anxiety in any number of ways. My son once said, after looking at one of our daily newspapers in the UK for a few days, he said, that the all-purpose headline for this newspaper is, don't go out there. And to be liberated from that pervasive anxiety, well, it's essential, but it's hard work. And you don't just set yourself free from anxiety by saying, well, I mustn't be anxious, anxiously saying, I mustn't be anxious. You do it by drawing back into that moment, finding the things that set you there, inhabiting the moment. A philosopher said hundreds of years ago that most of the troubles of the world arise from the inability of human beings to sit still in a room with themselves for 15 minutes. And while there are no quick fixes for the hideous conflicts and turmoils and cruelties of the world, the one thing we can do is to draw back into that presence and say, at least for this time, at least for this moment, I will not give another turn to the wheel of suffering and cruelty and resentment in the world. And who knows, in a world where everything is sustained by and pervaded by the compassionate energy of God, then that little moment where I'm not cooperating with anxiety and destructiveness becomes disproportionately important. It's a doorway in which that endless agency can come through for a moment. When you resolve to spend some time in stillness, the first thing you discover is that when external sounds fall away, the internal sounds start up. And what one religious sister I know called the internal menagerie begins to, to work. So you need a rhythm. You need to be aware of the rhythm of your breath, the basic thing which all religious traditions at one point or another underline, the breath which is spirit. And then, in my own practice, the naming of what I'm present to becomes important. For me, the Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy. You name what you're in the presence of, not as if you're talking to another human being, not as a magical technique to bring some result about, but just because it's important to, to name, to say, I am here, I am not everything, I am receiving from another who is active here. And to that other, I say, have mercy. I say, be, be yourself, be gracious, be Jesus, be God in flesh, be the word. So for my own stilling and calming, that's the formula, the rhythm that I come back to. And everyone says much the same, I think, about that experience, that the distractions will come and the menagerie will start up again. And all you can do is just recognize that and say, now then, let's start again. And God does not say, well, you've wasted my time for 15 minutes. God says, wonderful, glad to see you back. There's a line in a 17th century English poet, George Herbert, where he speaks about going into a place of prayer and he says, God is more there than thou. And in times of silence, we have to recognize God is more present than I am. It's not that God isn't there, I'm not there. And so all those moments when I can find ways of being there, they become important, and that's why naming matters. <laughs>